Pursuing my cosmic quest, I'm reaching Tepoztlan and Amatlan, two magical places located in the states of Morelos, in Mexico. Here rise up some very special mountain ranges, known to be sacred for the Toltec, the Aztec, and the Nahual tribes, who have been living there for the last, what, 1500 years or more? In these mountains, I discovered unique portals into other dimensions. Portals can be seen as gates in between space and time. And for some people, they also act like windows into higher level of consciousness. Actually, isn't it what consciousness about? The leap from the physical to the non-physical dimension? It seems to me that everyone can be his own portal in a way, if you dare to cross the line. Through consciousness, our mind have the power to change ourselves, and even to save the planet from our own, well, consciousness. Here in Amatlan, in the year 900, was born a very, very conscious human being. He was like a Buddha, or a Dalai Lama, or a Jesus. A human with a noble heart, a profound level of compassion, and pure light in his soul. Known as Se Akal Tupitzlin Quetzalcoatl, son of Ehad Kadli, god of the wind, and Simalma, a warrior woman, this man and his philosophy traveled across Mexico, Guatemala, Central America, down to South America. He became the historical basis of the Mesoamerican god, Quetzalcoatl, pictured as the feathered snake, worshipped by the Totecs, the Olmecs, the Mayan, and the Aztecs. Enlightened beings such as the Quetzalcoatl are sent on earth to teach people to expand their consciousness. They come to make the human heart a temple, the soul an altar, and the mind a priest. They come to remind us that we are not here to compete in between each other, but to learn, grow and excel from one another. We are here to evolve and make our consciousness high. We are here to encompass the world with love and light. If you go into a place where no human beings have moved, if you just go and close your eyes, you can actually feel that you are sitting in a temple. Think about the whole life process, from a simple seed to a tree for example. Do you realize the phenomenal amount of energy behind it? The intention to live and expand creates a consecration of its own. It creates a certain sacredness of its own. If you let the planet to be just the way it is, you will feel the whole place as a consecrated space. Nature is our temple. Humans, nevertheless, have always had the need to build temples within temples. It is their way to honor the gods and goddesses, to show them how much they love them and have faith in them. In the middle of these mountains, I discovered the Teposteco, an Aztec temple, a pyramid built around the year 1400, dedicated to Tepoztecat, the Aztec god of pulque, the sacred beverage made from the Mexican agave. The Aztecs were one of the main Mesoamerican culture, which expanded in Mexico from the year 1300 to 1500. The Aztecs were actually not one single tribe, but an alliance in between several groups of people who shared the same language, the Nahuatl. Among them were the Mexica people, the main rulers of the Aztec Empire, who actually gave the name to Mexico. We don't know where the Mexica people were coming from, but in Nahuatl, Mexico is a word derivated from Metzli, the moon, Xitli, center, and Co, place. Therefore, Mexico in Nahuatl means the place in the center of the moon. I found it marvelous to discover that words have actually an entire and complex history and cosmology. They remind us that a thousand years ago, people were already observing the world as a magical and cosmic place, and Mexico is clearly one of them. This story reminds me that we are explorers. We are explorers of our own planet, of our own universe. And in this never-ending exploration and understanding, the greatest good we can do is expand our consciousness. Why? Because our world is endangered by the absence of consciousness. Don't you see what we're doing to the planet, and most life on it? Consciousness is not an act, not an idea, not even a quality. 
it's a way of being. Here it is said that some people who went through the Amatlan portals never came back or that some people came back 10 years later. So I'm wondering, am I really back? Is today today or already tomorrow? Have I landed in a more conscious world? I wish. I wish to witness a world where we can all live in peace and harmony. This is what cosmos and cosmology are about. The understanding of the reason of its existence and viewing the universe as a harmonious complex entity where we're not alone. I've heard from many people here that these mountains are so special and high in energy that even spaceships from other worlds come and recharge here. If you ask anyone, they will tell you they have seen of these. It is said that the spaceships enter into the mountains and recharge with the copper. Actually, in Nahuatl language, Tepoztlan means place of abundant copper. Ah, now, it makes sense. This place is acting like a temporal portal. And back from the other dimension, I'm happy to share a very simple message with you. Forget your voice and sing. Forget your feet and dance. Forget your life and live. Forget yourself and be.